light welterweight crown. Then came the professional offers. Ricky and his father chose trainer Billy Graham and promoter Frank Warren. I think you always feel that somebody's going to, you know, when you sign a young guy and you've got, you got a bit of a feeling about them, you feel to yourself, you know, hang on, he's going to be something special. But he's turned out to be a bit more special than I thought. I've got to be honest about that. Billy said, well, I'd like to train him when he turns pro. I said, well, what do you mean by training him? I said, he's already trained. He said, just keep him fit and he'll win your world titles. And that's what went from there. He came of age tonight. It showed that I've got the bottle, you know, to come through, uh, something like that. I mean, how many fighters get caught in the first 15 seconds and then can go the, the whole 12 rounds and barely lose a round, you know, so I think that uh, showed a lot about what Ricky Atten's got in there. The city of Manchester has really started to flourish again in recent years and no area has seen more rapid development than in boxing. Fighters like Robin Reed, Michael Jennings, David Barnes, Thomas McDonough, Stephen Foster Jr and Ricky's brother Matthew all following the Hatton battle cry. Oh, it's fantastic, you know, this it is the capital of, of boxing. I mean, if you want to come anywhere, you've got to come to Manchester for it. I think you've seen Manchester now absolutely boom because these kids have been inspired by what Ricky's done um, and they'll go from strength to strength. They've got the confidence that Ricky's given them. It's like the football teams, there's always a bit of banter between them all, but it's Manchester and that's where all they to stick together for each other, you know what I mean, as fighters and as, as um, supporters. Hey, Manchester, Manchester, hey, man. Manchester. He's a big hit with the Manchester crowd because every time he fights, like you know, the place is rammed. You know, when uh, it's good, you know, Manchester's a buzz at the minute. Ricky often goes back to his roots. He drops by the Sale West Club to help find the next Ricky Hatton. He did six, Tony. He's cheating. Watch him. Lazy. They just love having him around. You have him at shows, and the OIC came to me in the last show and said, Ted. Can you shift Ricky Atten? Because he was sat on the ringside, obviously, and I said, well, what's the matter, Bill? He said, we want to get on with the boxing. He said, there's 200 kids lined up there for your autographs. Ricky's always giving up his time for others. He even plays on the pub darts team. No airs and graces, just a good guy. My eyes still have the same mates that I had when I was um, 11, 12 years old, and they're still the same mates now, you know, I'm just... You know, down to earth, and they just treat me. You know, to and me. They still I'm, take the Mickey. Yeah, I've to, seen them. Of course, they still take the Mickey. You know, I'm to them. I'm Ricky. I'm not Ricky, the the boxer or the world champion or whatever. I'm just Ricky. You know? His spare time's always spent with the same group. He's really happy being one of the lads. But he has one special friend, James Bowers, whose support was crucial when he fought for the WBU title. Ricky, the best. <laughs> 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 Wonderful that you shared the night with uh, James Bowers there behind you. Yeah, he's a fantastic little lad. You know, he's uh, he's an inspiration to us all. You know, he's got a, you know a few problems um, to cope with. You know, and he says I'm his hero and I'm his inspiration. Well, that young lad like that, he's everyone's inspiration. James moved Ricky's heart the moment he met him. The seriously ill youngster from Manchester has become an ever-present at ringside. You heard my voice, didn't you? <laughs> Your voice all night, pal. Yeah. It's always the same, isn't it? Yeah. Number one fan, eh? But Ricky's greatest support has come from Dad Ray, who takes time out from his carpet business, and Mum Carol, who's always helping out, but both get the pre-fight jitters. We lie, lie awake. <laughs> and he's snoring in his he's head off. He's snoring his head off in this room. <laughs> and, and sometimes I feel like getting up and shaking him and saying, if we're not sleeping, you're not sleeping, because the reason we're not sleeping is because of you. They're regulars at ringside, although Carol gets extremely nervous and Ray can't even speak. The relief of victory is followed by a real family celebration in the pub they used to run. Even grandmas Kathleen and Dorothy take part. But younger brother Matthew is the closest of all. They are best friends and box side by side, fighting each other's corner 
and even working together in the ring. I look up to Richard and I'm, uh, I'm so proud of him, really. I can't really put it into words, so, no, there's no jealousy there. You've always been close since you were kids. That's it. We've, um, you know, we've always played together since we were small and now, now we're older. We go out together and uh, socialise together. You know, we're very close and, uh, you know, I mean, when Ricky fights, I'm as nervous for him as he is for me. The newest addition to the Hatton household is Ricky's four-year-old son, Campbell, who's learning the ropes already. His dad simply adores him. The Hattons are such a tight-knit family, and Ricky has lived at home for 26 years, until now. Finally, he's packed his bags and flown the nest. The only thing is, he's moved to the very next street. Hi, Adam. Okay. Come in, mate. How Let me doing? show you around. Thanks. So the first house, you're finally out. It certainly is. I never thought I'd move out. I thought I was going to be with my mum and dad for life, but uh, finally got round to, to doing it and uh, really enjoying it, to be honest, yeah. And is this the dream home? Uh, yeah, it is. You know, it's my first home, you know, and uh, I think when I first laced the gloves on at 10, you know, I didn't think, uh, you know, I'd, I'd get a home, you know, like this. So, uh, you know, very, very pleased. It makes it all worthwhile in the end. Uh, this is the, uh, the dining room, Adam. I'll be honest, uh, this table hasn't had much use since I've, uh, <laughs> since I've been in. But these, uh, you know, I collect a lot of memorabilia, not only my boxing memorabilia, but, uh, you know, film stars, really. And uh, the kitchen. Uh, Your favourite room? I think the only thing I make in this kitchen is a cup of tea. The cooker and the dishwasher is just brand spanking now. No, <laughs> it's just used. not been touched. You know, the microwave's had a bit of an hammering. Yeah, up the stairs. St still the pictures continue. <laughs> All the way up the stairs. Hundreds of them. Oh, yeah, and uh, got a couple of spare rooms. A couple of spare rooms, and this is my bedroom. Got my little bathroom there. And sweet. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is my bedroom. Very nice. Like I say, I've got my television in me, head in my oh. wardrobe. <laughs> I was just come through the, the house now to me, my favourite room. This is my favourite room of the, wow. of the house. You know, so this is like me, me pride and joy. Ricky loves sporting competition and also has a huge collection of unique memorabilia. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't have to get out. <laughs> Home is most definitely where Ricky's heart is. The journey to his parents takes all of 57 seconds, where he still gets his home-cooked meals whenever he needs them. You go, baby, bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tuck it in, no, I'm, it. I'm moving back in. Just <laughs> There's no question where his boxing home is. Manchester's MEN Arena is literally packed to the rafters for a Hatton fight, and he thrills the fans by always giving them a night to remember.